Welcome to Let's Talk About Change Management podcast. My name is Isabella Brusati and I will be your host. And uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, again, neuroscience, uh, why people resist change uh, and some tactics. Uh, it's not exhaustive, but, you know, we'll start talking about some solution. It's actually important to uh, understand the reason why people resist change, because if we know the reason, it's more likely that we can find a solution. Let's remember that not everyone will come on board when it comes to a change initiative. There will be people that will make the decision not to come on board, and that's okay. Yes, even if it is a regulatory change or you know, new legislation, it's unlikely, I'm not saying impossible, but it's unlikely that 100% of the individuals will actually come on board. So first of all, we have to think about how a brain works. So it is geared towards uh, uh, predicting. It's a prediction machine. It literally is scanning the environment and it's looking for threats. So if there is a threat, uh, it goes into fight, uh, flight mode. So it's like, oh my gosh, I need to do something about it. And uh, it was okay when uh, we were, you know, in the old days with the dinosaur, etc. Because clearly if you see a dinosaur, you know, popping up, you have, to, <laughs> you have to run and run quickly. But nowadays, to be honest, uh, when it comes to you know, a CRM or when it comes to a uh, new organizational structure, I mean, this is not a dinosaur, but our brain doesn't make a difference between the dinosaur and the CRM or the new organizational structure. For our brain, it is basically a glitch in the system because it's predicting something and that something is not happening. So, the, it doesn't have basically the narrative based on something that um, can be, again, predicted. So something that is comfortable, something that is uh, basically aligned with uh, what uh, we expect uh, is going to happen. Now, our brain is not geared towards uh, managing continuous change. So what we are doing basically nowadays is uh, we are going to implement, for example, a new CRM and then we implement also the new ERP and then we're going to do an organizational structure and then we're going to do a merger and then we're going to do an acquisition. I mean, that's a lot. And our brain basically, when it's uh, uh, upset or, you know, again, it gets into glitch mode, oh my gosh, something is happening and it's not consistent with the narrative of the predictable, it basically, uh, there is a something called amygdala, which is a part of our brain that gets, in, gets activated. And uh, also uh, our body, in order to manage the, uh, the, what it's perceiving as danger, releases cortisol. Cortisol, it's okay if uh, it's released once in a while. So like in, for example, 20, 30 years ago, there, there was change. It can also be just a personal change. It's not necessarily only organizational change. And, you know, once in a while, our brain, uh, you know, releases cortisol. Cortisol basically gives us the boost to go through change and basically then go back to the, uh, again, predictable and routine. But nowadays, it's happened, the change is happening so quickly and so relentlessly that our brain does not have the chance to go back to basically predictable. There is no prediction because you never know what is going to happen tomorrow. So one of the interesting things is that the uh, economic model, and again, I'm not going to go through whether uh, you know, uh, the economic model is right or wrong, etc. I will talk about this in a future podcasts. But our economical model basically is uh, geared towards something that fundamentally our brain cannot absorb. <laughs> so when we say that people are dragging their feet, uh, that they are being difficult, that they are being lazy, in reality they are overwhelmed. Cortisol creates stress. Stress, if it is ongoing, leads to burnout and illnesses. So it's not unusual for people, for example, to go through something called uh, quiet quitting. So still being employed, but doing the bare minimum. Because again, in some cases, it's actually a reaction of the brain to you know, release some of the stress. In some cases, it's not. But you know, just to give an idea that sometimes uh, we label things uh, 
as something or you know the person is lazy they're not keeping up etc whilst in fact it can be genuinely a way for our brain to manage the um the situation but what can we do about it i mean uh, try to change your brain uh, not possible because again uh, that's the way that we are geared so uh, um, <laughs> uh Unless maybe in the future, and I hope that, so that we will not get to the point where they're going to implant something to make our brain work differently. But, you know, for the time being, that's not the case. And I genuinely hope that it's not going to happen. Um, what can we do about it? What is very important is basically creating a narrative. So creating a narrative of predictability. That's why actually setting the vision for change and reiterating the vision for change is absolutely key. I'm not saying that this is something that uh, is going to be positive for employees because in some cases from a change there is not that much of a positive coming out. But at least people can start mourn the loss and they start to adapt. For example, I've been involved in lots of uh, um, restructuring and I remember I was working for this uh, big uh, institution in financial services uh, and uh, some individuals knew that their jobs were going to be made redundant. And uh, they actually had the chance to mourn. And after a dip in their performance, uh, actually we uh, noticed that there has been a, a, it actually went up. And it was like, gosh, this is strange because these people are going to lose their job. There was also a form of incentive, etc. But basically they had the chance to make peace with the situation rather than actually leaving people with this uncertainty we don't know what is going to happen yes maybe yes maybe no so whatever possible try to cut the uncertainty and communicate also when you don't have anything to communicate which sounds like an oxymoron but in reality is set the pattern and a process for communication and no communicating once a, a month uh, is not a good idea i've actually seen uh, a change uh, where basically um, there is no sponsor coalition uh, the primary sponsor is appearing once a month uh, and every time that there is basically a, a communication in reality it's an exercise where people are being provided with tons of information and they are required, so without having the chance to absorb the information, to find a solution. Because it's perceived as, oh, people are being engaged in this way. In reality, that's not the way that it works. Uh, one of the ways to um, basically manage resistance is, in addition to provide co communication and being consistent, uh, is giving people a time to absorb the information, uh, and then is also setting small goals that can be achieved. Sometimes things like digital transformation can last for three, four years. And if we actually focus on what is going to happen in four years, gosh, people are going to get like, you know, <laughs> like a carpet because it's too much. So set intermediate goals and celebrate also quick wins and intermediate milestones. One of the things that tend to happen when um, companies set uh, budgets for change management, they don't take into consideration the interim celebration. And it's got to be something that is meaningful for that team. Sometimes it can literally be praise from the manager. So, you know, at the weekly team meeting, uh, well done uh, to such and such, uh, you did a fantastic job. Of course, be careful to be equal. Again, I have uh, uh, witnessed uh, um, recently a change initiative whereby the company is waving the flag of uh, being equal and in fact, uh, the employees are being treated blatantly differently. And remember that the best are the first to leave. So when also you praise individuals, take into consideration their situation and praise them accordingly. And it has to be genuine, not, oh yeah, you are a valued employee, this word valued, you know, just thrown in the, um, in like, uh, you know, it's uh, it sounds nice because people can see whether it is a genuine thing or if it is just a lip service. So uh, reward, uh, and again, it doesn't necessarily have to be money because again, money is not uh, something necessarily that is sustainable. 
being honest, so don't make things up, and uh, remind people also of successes of the past. And um, I have a um, colleague that uh, he's, uh, uh, I mean, a friend who's, uh, who's a coach. And uh, I remember, you know, talking about, you know, coaching people, etc. And uh, she came up with uh, this exercise. I mean, this is something that probably people that are watching these uh, uh, um, just audio <laughs> will not see. But uh, she got a post-it and she wrote 100%. And I was like, why are you doing that? Said, how many times have you actually, um, have you gone through a change? A hundred percent, because otherwise we will not be here. So it's also, for example, is a hundred percent and put, uh, for example, the post-it somewhere on, uh, you know, your laptop, etc., to remind you that we have been successful in the past. Again, do not underestimate the journey that people are going through. So take into consideration that it is a big deal for lots of people. And the thing that we are going to become, you know, the company of the future and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, if there is no what's in it for me, I'm like, yes, you senior individuals are going to get even more money. And I'm actually just a clog in the machine. So again, careful when it comes to the message. Also, um, it's true that our brain doesn't like change. But our brain doesn't like also flat because it gets bored. So also when you are delivering messages on, you know, when you are engaging people, try to tweak it. Uh, for example, you know, uh, you can have uh, something a bit more creative uh, if uh, you are uh, announcing, uh, you know, the, the employee of the week of the month or whatever it is because you want to create some, uh, oh, wow, look at this, because boredom kills. One of the most, uh, um, or the worst thing that companies can do is actually let people languish. Nowadays, uh, unfortunately, there are companies that engage into quite uh, firing and uh, pretending that this person doesn't exist, so giving them, you know, just... Uh, mundane, really boring uh, uh, activities in the hope that this person is going to leave, which I think is absolutely disgraceful. But uh, again, uh, we are operating in an economy that sometimes is genuinely uh, problematic in terms of ethics. Um, other things that we can do in order to uh, try to um, get people on board is um, have a little bit of a laugh. It doesn't always have to be doom and gloom. Our brain is geared toward doom and gloom, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's also laugh at yourself or at the team. When also things don't go right, say, oops, guys, there was a glitch here. Some people will not like it, but get a little bit of lightness into this world of, uh, uh, you know, continuous change. And sometimes uh, is use my favorite tactic, which is bringing some chocolate. <laughs> so again, uh, you know, uh, make sure that people realize that you genuinely value them, that uh, they are not just a, uh, you know, a number on an Excel spreadsheet. So these are just some of uh, tactics that you can decide to start uh, implementing. Start, start small. And again, take into consideration the, um, the culture of your team and of the organization. There is not one size fits all. But try also to understand why people react in a certain way. It's our brain. It's the way that we are geared. And therefore, once you understand the reason why people resist change, it's I'm not saying easier, but it makes actually uh, more sense uh, trying to devise some tactics and solution in order to try to get them on board. And also, in some cases, rather than making an assumption, ask, ask people. Uh, some people will vent, some people will be very, um, very angry. But again, the anger is not, is not towards you, it's towards the situation. And uh, what I noticed... Uh, is especially in organizations that uh, don't walk the talk. So uh, where basically everyone, you know, we are a family, this is a great organization, everyone is valued, but actually you are not. So 
equality and treating people like human beings uh, is still the best tactic uh, that uh, you can implement. If you got any question or if you want to share also your personal experiences, please feel free to put it in the comments and uh, I'll see you at the next episode of Let's Talk About Change Management.